Hello everyone, this is your civil girl and this is the third lecture of Reinforced Cement Concrete. In this lecture, we are going to see about properties of fresh concrete. It is a very easy topic, so let's get started. And before we start, I would really appreciate it if you could smash that like button, drop me a comment and share this free program with anyone who might need it. So first let us learn about admixtures. So admixtures are the additives added to modify the properties of concrete. They are added while the concrete is still fresh or while mixing they are added. There are four different types of admixtures that are commonly used. First one, accelerators, retarders, super plasticizers are in training agents. So accelerators as the name suggests, it speeds up the setting action and thereby reduces the setting time. So if you add an accelerator, uh, if the normal setting time of uh, concrete initial setting time is 10 minutes, 30 minutes and final setting time is 10 hours, it will be reduced significantly. So that is what we use accelerators for. And next is retarders. It uh, produces the opposite effect. Retarders will slow down the uh, setting action and it will increase the setting time. As a result, the concrete will be setting for a large amount of time greater than 10 hours. Next is super plasticizers. So we know that strength of concrete is inversely proportional to water cement ratio. If the water cement ratio is less, the strength will be more. So in order to reduce the water in the concrete, we will go for super plasticizers. So uh, in the mixed design itself, the water which we are getting is enough to, to complete the whole hydration reaction. But uh, some of the water is not utilized properly because uh, the reason why the water is not sufficient is one is because of evaporation which is why we do curing but inside the concrete uh, say if this is my water droplet it may be surrounded by my cement particles which are smaller in size. So these cement particles due to surface tension they will uh, create a flocculating effect and it will hold the water inside. Because of this, this water is not utilized at all for hydration reaction. So when we add the super plasticizer, it will deflocculate these uh, cement particles and this water is dispersed. So this is why we use super plasticizers and the mixed in water is more than enough for the whole complete hydration reaction. In case you don't know how to design uh, a mixed design based on the new code, the 2019 code, I have the links to it in the description below. I have both M20 and M40 mixed design. Next is air and training agents. This air and training agents, they are not used widely in India, but it is used uh, throughout the world where there are cold weather regions. So these air and training agents, uh, unlike super plasticizer, will reduce the strength to a bit. It will reduce strength, but what it will do it, it will increase durability. How means the cold weather regions, they are subjected to low temperatures, right? So uh, we know that if there is water, when it is freezed, I mean, when the temperature goes down, this water will turn into ice. And the volume of water is lesser than volume of ice. When water cha uh, changes to ice, its volume increases dramatically. So let us look into a concrete now. Say this is my concrete and I have my uh, water here. And due to the cold weather region and due to my climate uh, conditions, this water starts to freeze and it starts to form ice. So this is my water's volume which is which it is occupying and since it is changing into ice and its volume is increasing it becomes like this since i am just exaggerating it it won't be that big the volume has increased so here uh, all these materials are packed with concrete so there will not be space for this much amount of volume as a result this concrete it is cracked to make space for this extra volume so when this crack reaches the surface, then this concrete will fail. So in order to avoid this, what we'll do is, we will provide air and training agents. What these air and training agents will do is, it will produce man-made air voids inside the concrete. So because of this, when the same cold conditions happen, in my concrete, this water will turn into ice, but it will turn inside this pore. The, the extra volume will occupy this pore so that there will not be any cracks forming this time and my concrete will be safe and thus durability will increase. That is the uh, advantage of using air and training agents. 
Next, coming to workability, it is the most important property of fresh concrete. So, workability means it is the ease and homogeneity with which the concrete can be placed, transported, finished without segregation and bleeding. Uh, we always say the ease with which the concrete but we should also remember that homogeneity is also important. Next the tests that is used to uh, find the workability are slump test, compaction factor test, PB consistor meter test, Kelly ball test, flow table test. In this these three are important because these three are mentioned in IS 456. So slump test uh, we will use a slump cone for slump test. It is mostly used in uh, site conditions because it is very easy to perform. So let me draw a slump cone. This is my slump cone. Uh, the height of the slump cone is 1 feet or 30 centimeters. The lower diameter is 20 and the upper diameter is 10 centimeters. And how I'll measure workability is Inside this slump test I will fill concrete in 3 layers and for every layer I'll be tamping it for 25 times with my tamping rod after that I will have handles here and I will lift this slump cone so that inside inside it if my concretes are going to be like this after the slump cone is uh, taken out due, as there is no restriction for the concrete it will flow down this will become this shape will become this shape there will be subsidence in the concrete because the, there is no restriction for the concrete so the concrete will flow and thus the subsidence occurs. This subsidence is called as the slump value. This is how we will find slump. And next is uh, compaction factor test. Compaction factor test here we have uh, two hoppers and one cylinder. It will be something like this and at last we will have a cylinder here. So what we will do is firstly we all know this test we, we would have done it in our concrete technology lab but again brushing it up uh, first we will pour the concrete here there is no tamping or compaction or anything there is nothing just pouring it uh, allowing it to free fall and after that uh, the trap door here is opened as a result the concrete here it travels to this hopper and after it has come here this trap door is opened after that this concrete will I'll, uh, fall into this cylinder and it will occupy it. After this, the cylinder, uh, the top is leveled and then it is weighed. After weighing, the same cylinder is emptied and inside it, we will be uh, filling it with the same concrete mix but this time, we will for every 5 cm, we will be tamping it and compacting the concrete. Uh, and after that, the whole cylinder is again weighed. So, the first weight is taken as weight of partially compacted concrete. And the second weight uh, which we will compact for every cent 5 centimeters, right? That is taken as weight of fully compacted concrete. So partially compacted concrete is allowed to free fall from these two hoppers that is partially compacted and weight of fully compacted concrete is the manually compacted concrete. So this will give us the compaction factor and based on the compaction factor also we can arrive at the workability. Next is VB consistometer test. So in VB consistometer test, just like our slump cone, uh, th th but this time we will place our slump cone inside a cylinder. This is my slump cone. I will be placing it inside a cylinder. Here I filled it in 3 layers, but here I will be filling it in 4 layers. That is the difference. I will be filling it in 4 layers and I will remove this slump cone. As soon as I remove my slump cone, I will start turn on the machine of VB consistor meter which will give continuous vibration. As a result, this conical shape of the concrete will turn into the cylindrical shape of the VB consistor meter cylinder. This time we, will, we are going to measure the time. The time taken for the concrete to change from uh, the conical shape to the cylindrical shape is called as the VB time. Next is Kelly ball test and flow table test. They are not that important because they have not been mentioned in IS-456. Coming to the types of slump, there are four different types of slumps. Zero slump, true slump, collapse and shear slump. So zero slump means, uh, say this is my uh, slump cone. After I remove my slump cone, the concrete is in the same position. It has not subsided at all. Then it is called a zero slump because there is zero subsidence. Next, true slump. In true slump, the concrete is, say this is my concrete, it is subsided to a level. It has subsided. 
this level it has been subsided the cone shape has not been compromised at the same time subsidence has also occurred this is called as true slump next is collapse if my workability is very high if the water content is very high then my uh, concrete tends to collapse this is my cone and after i take my cone if my concrete collapses to the ground then it is called as collapse uh, this happens when the workability is very high next is shear slump here instead of the concrete assuming this shape it will be sliding to one side like this like with no definite shape but sliding to one side this is called as shear slump next is compaction factor test uh, we already saw the uh, definition for compaction factor test it is weight of partially compacted concrete divided by weight of fully compacted concrete so when we'll go for compaction factor test is uh, after we uh, firstly in the site we'll always prefer for slump cone test in the slump cone test if my subsidence value is less than 25 mm uh, then i should not perform slump test on it i should perform compaction factor for it likewise if my slump value is greater than 150 mm then i should go for vb consistometer test so vb consistometer it is measured in terms of time so this is all we have to keep in mind as far as the properties of fresh concrete are concerned and i would also recommend learning class 7.1 the table near clause 7.1 page number 17 in is 456 that will also will help you in one marks let us look at some problems that have been asked in previous gate papers first one is the maximum possible value of compaction factor for green concrete is so don't be don't get confused green concrete means fresh concrete so in fresh concrete what is the maximum value for compaction factor you know what is compaction factor it is weight of partially compacted concrete divided by weight of fully compacted concrete so the weight of if i am going to take the weight of fully compacted concrete as 100 kg then my weight of a partially compacted concrete it can be anywhere below 100 kg or equal to 100 kg how i am saying that it can be equal to 100 kg is assume there is a uh, slurry and not concrete there is a slurry uh, a concrete with uh, uh, more amount of water so when i am going to put that slurry from three hoppers if it is very watery then it will flow completely through this and through this and through this so it will get completely occupied there will not be any voids there will not there will not be any need for compaction the partially compacted concrete will be equal to the fully compacted concrete so uh, this partially compacted concrete can take from anywhere uh, below 100 to 100 so 100 by 100 will give me 1 so the maximum value the compaction factor can take is 1 This was asked in Gate 2013. Let us look into another problem. This is also very easy. This was asked in Gate 2015, Set One. As slump increases, VB the VB time increases. As the slump increases, the compaction factor increases. So, based on these two statements, we have to find which is true and which is false. So, firstly, as the slump increases, what they mean by slump increases means. Um, after i take my cone the subsidence is very large so if the subsidence is large then it means my concrete is a very watery my concrete is very watery so from this we can understand that my water content is very high so let us see if it will um, if it matches with the second statement the vb time increases so when does vb time increase what is vb time the time taken for the slump to attain the shape of the cylinder so if my water content is very large then as soon as i remove my slump cone it will take the shape of the cylinder therefore my vp time reduces but they have told here that the vp time increases so this statement is wrong next coming to the second statement as the slump increases the compaction factor increases some Uh, so this is the same as the first statement so if the slump increases my water content is high the compaction factor increases what does that mean compaction factor means weight of partially compacted by weight of fully compacted so if my water content is increasing then my weight of partially contact compacted will also increase it may also take the value of fully compacted also so, so this means that if my uh, numerator is increasing then my compaction factor will also increase so this statement is correct so from this i can say that one is false and second is true 
So my option is D. Going to the third question, I want you guys to solve this and comment on the answers. So here also they have given two statements and we have to find which is true and which is false. Air entrainment reduces the water demand for a given level of workability. Use of air entrained concrete is required in environment where cyclic freezing and thawing is expected. I want you guys to find the answer for this and let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.